So the roll call is interesting because I was working. I was working late that day, so I had it on my TV, but it was on mute, and I was just watching. And I, I know the process of the roll call, and I know it's very um, procedural and stuff like that. So I'll, it's not that I felt like I didn't need to watch it or listen to it, but I thought if I had it on, I'd be fine. But the funniest thing, John, is I just, you know, every, what, 30 seconds or so, you pick your head up, and I was like, wait, is that little John? Wait, is that this person? Wait, is, is that this person? And I thought, wait, is this a roll call? What am I missing here? Um, just to see on social media that people were like, they were doing like the song per state. There was a playlist available, right? Someone had kudos to whoever it was at the DNC's job to do that. But someone said, if if Democrats don't have a playlist ready by the night, and someone replied, it's already ready. Like it's already online. So kudos to whoever's job that was. <laughs> to prepare that. Um, but then I was thinking, oh, okay, this is going to be, um, as a proud Chicagoan, I, I thought, this is going to be a thing moving forward, I assume. And I also assume that the, Repu- the Republicans will try to steal this kind of process as well in 2028, if there's a primary, depending on their, their cult leader, right? So I just thought, man, that was pretty cool. It was a way to get it popping. And then, then, John, I think what made it really viral was the difference. There was a supercut that was made even during the roll call, like after Georgia went, it was a, a, a supercut of, I think, either um, Johnson or somebody at the, Repu- the RNC calling for the roll call, superimposed Little John calling it for the DNC side. And I was just like, yeah, this is fun. This is, I think bef- Monday night felt celebratory, but Tuesday night was the first night where I was like, oh, this is a party. And maybe part of that was, maybe John, maybe you talked about Monday versus Tuesday on the roll call. Maybe part of it was let's give Biden his flowers, and then I, I, from what I understand, Biden jumped on a plane and left. Um, so maybe it was part of it was like let's have Biden give him his flowers, and then we'll start the party on Tuesday. So it was just it was just, I think the roll call was the first night of the week where I was like, oh, this is just going to be a big uh, big party, and everybody was looking forward to it. But kudos to where was idea was kudos to Chicago. We'll talk about it after. But the, what I clearly they're the best DNC, maybe the best convention ever. So. A uh, good idea on them. I think they'll they'll do it moving forward as well. Well, I I can't speak for everybody, but I am confident that a fair amount of people in attendance, both in the delegations and in the uh, the bleacher, you know, the the areas above it, I I I'm gonna assume that a lot of people pre-gamed. I think they pre-gamed every day. Uh, and um, let me just tell you how much of a nerd I am. And uh. Let's also remember, if you go to 2020, 2020, remember because it was a viral, they did the viral roll call video, and that was pretty hot. Remember they had, like, the guy from Rhode Island talking about the calamari, and, I mean, it was a fun roll call. But just so you know, even the boring roll calls, to me, I get emotional because um, you see the diversity of each state's party. Um, and let's just say, I'm talking pre I'm talking 2016, 2012, 2008. Um, every every year, it's just it's emotional. Even when it's the boring, even when it's what quote unquote the boring roll call, because each state gets up, you know, in alphabetical order, and they brag on their state. They say what they're proud of. They talk about the values. They talk about how they're going to deliver this state for you know the the particular candidate. And you, you see everybody, especially you know, being part of a state uh, delegation and state party, you know, we don't understand the fights that go on throughout the year, but for some reason in that, you know, that one night for the 15, for the little three to five minutes that you guys are on camera, um, you guys are hyped and you're united and everything else. So I'm talking even the boring, the boring, 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 boring roll call for me has always been emotional and exciting. And I love, I, I never miss it. And so, the funny thing, and let me give you guys a tradition too, and I'll tell you this much. Um, in previous years, and the reason why I say you get emotional, watch previous year roll call and watch it win, especially 2008 and 2016, when uh, they tossed it to Illinois and Illinois puts Obama over the top. Or in, or in 2016, they toss it to New York and New York puts Hillary over the top. Um, one of the things that happens is, and they did a little different, but with your state, uh, if the home, if the president or vice president state comes up during the roll call and they're not yet near the end, 
that state passes. So if, if you saw, um, immediately uh, they went to Alabama, well, and, and also you pay tribute to the exiting president. So the first thing that they did was Alabama's first on the list. So you hear Sweet Home Alabama playing, and they say, you know, uh, Mr. Mr. Secretary, uh, Alabama passes. And the reason why Alabama passes, they don't have a dog in this hunt, but they're passing purposely to Delaware. Why are they passing to Delaware? Because Delaware is Joe Biden's home state. If 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 Joe Biden is state the nominee, Delaware would have gotten it on time, and they would have eventually passed it to where Delaware would have gone last. So um, what they did was they passed it, and they go down the line. And once the music starts playing, by the way, I'm not sure if you saw it on TV, and uh, this is something that's new to me, but I've heard about it a few times. You come in, and all the seats have these wristbands on them, and it's the wristbands that light up. And so, we, and, and I realized that so we put them on, and I realized somebody's controlling this because mine's turning all these different colors, and I'm watching around the arena. And so that's, I guess that's a Taylor Swift thing or a Beyonce thing, or where, where the wristbands. So they got the wristbands, the light up wristbands on the seats, and so everybody, you know, you're seeing that, you're watching that, and already with the music, everyone's going nuts. And it was funny because they go to California. And they're playing Dr. Dre. And my friend texts me from California. She goes, they better bring out Dr. Dre or Snoop Dogg. And they don't. And she didn't understand. She didn't know that um, Lil Jon's coming from Georgia. And so then they go down the line and they get to Georgia. And for those of you who haven't seen the clip, Lil Jon comes in. And uh, the place is just going nuts. Place is going nuts. And that's when my friend texts me. She goes, oh, they need Snoop. Uh, and so... They go around, we get to Minnesota, Purple Rain plays, and then they, they go ahead and they pass on it because they want to be second to last. So they go through, everybody's going, and then we get to the end. And I will tell you, it was emotional. I I, you, I teared up the entire time. It was just the the joy and the excitement. And I was sitting, remember I told you the first night I had floor passes? I had floor passes every night, but I knew I wouldn't find a seat, and I didn't want to stand the whole night. So I purposely went up to 300 just so that I wouldn't have to fend for myself. And so, and I will tell you, that was an amazing vantage point for that night because you could see that, you know, you look at the floor and uh, whenever a particular section stood up, uh, when they call the state, you would see them all wait and jump up and you would see activity, right? Whether they're waving flags, holding up signs or what have you. Uh, when Wisconsin stood up, they all had cheese ads. Uh, we booed when they, when, you know, because, you, you you and I are Chicago fans through and through. You do not wear cheese heads or celebrate the Packers, even if we're in the Bull Stadium. I mean, put it this way: we're in the Bull Stadium, and the Packers got booed, booed harder than the um, Bucks, right? Uh, you know, all things being really equal, because we, you know, maybe Cubs fans hate the Braves a little bit, but it's really the the Bucks. Uh, or, or, I mean, the Brewers. May, you know, they may they might, Cubs fans might hate the hate the Brewers a little bit. But nothing, nothing like the, the that. Um, but it, it was it was exciting. Oh.